Hey everyone, in this video I'll be talking about Sulawesi Shrimp Tank water parameters and the parameters that I've used to successfully keep and breed them and I'll also talk about the pros and cons of using Salty Shrimp's Sulawesi Mineral 8.5 versus 7.5 and which one I use and why I use them. Hey everyone, it's Ray from RW Aquarium Pages and thank you for stopping by. I've been keeping Sulawesi shrimps on and off since 2009 and my second to last colony was about 500 Caradina denarellis or commonly known as uh, the White Sox or the Sulawesi Cardinals. I've successfully kept and bred 5 to 6 different types and I'll share a few of my techniques and tips on the tank parameters. I've just recently, about three months ago, restarted four colonies and they're doing quite well and they're breeding and there's lots of babies there. From my internet research, the links will be provided in the description below, and my personal experience, I'll be describing their natural habitats water parameters and my tank's water parameters. The Malali Lake system contains five lakes, but there are three main lakes that the hunters gather Sulawesi shrimps from. Lake Poso, Lake Matano, and Lake Tuoti. I'll start off with Lake Poso, where you can find the white orchids and blue leg posos. They are the easier types of Sulawesi shrimps to keep and breed in captivity, and I've successfully done so. I'm currently keeping an aquarium of white orchids. And from my research, the pH is around 8.1, the general hardness around 5 degrees hardness, the carbonate hardness is around 4 degrees, and the conductivity is about 107 microsiemens. The next lake is Lake Mataano, which has a few species, but the most common found there is the Caradina denarelli or commonly known as the White Sox, the Kung Fu Shrimp, or the Sulawesi Cardinals. The conditionals are similar to Lake Poso, where the pH is around 8.5, so it's slightly higher. The GH, or general hardness, is 7, the carbonate hardness is around 6, and the conductivity is around 175 microsiemens. The third lake contains very colorful, but much more difficult to breed and keep species, this is the Lake Tawoti. This lake contains species such as red orchids, yellow cheek, red lime bee, and harlequins, which their Latin names are Caradina gallibretti, spinata, striata, and Walter keiki. I bred red orchids, harlequins, and I'm currently breeding spinata. The water conditions are the temperature is 29.2, the pH is around 8.4, the GH is 6, the KH is 4, and the conductivity is 146. As I have just described the three lakes in summary, most of the lakes are above or around 28 degrees Celsius. The pH is between 8.1 to 8.5, and the conductivity is around 100 to 175 microsiemens. As a result, I personally prefer the Salty Shrimp Sulawesi Shrimp Mix 8.5 over the 7.5 version. The 8.5 is hard to dissolve, so what I do is I use hot water to pre-mix it to a TDS of 130 parts per million, and then I mix it in a bucket with reverse osmosis RODI water for 7 days with a power head. Afterwards, on a weekly basis, I do a drip 5% water change. I find the Salty Shrimp 8.5 brings the pH to around 8.1, which is closer to the three lakes described before. Salty Shrimp 7.5 or the Sulawesi Shrimp 7.5 brings the pH to around 7.1, which is a bit lower than I personally like, but it is a lot easier to dissolve. Salty Shrimp Sulawesi 7.5, I've seen it work successfully for other people for homebred shrimps, but personally, for homebred and for wild caught ones, uh, Sulawesi shrimps, I've had more success with 8.5 instead. I have a question for you, which is, 
Which Sulawesi remineralizer do you use and is successful with? Leave your comments below. Stay tuned for the next series on setting up a Sulawesi shrimp aquarium, breeding, and caring, and caring for these shrimps. Have a great day!